Before we get into today's edition of Just the Truth, Mike Lindell sent me a note yesterday. He has a special for the six-piece towel set, 25 bucks when you use promo code JOEY. Just go to MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY. You'll get the $25 offer on the six-piece towel set, and I promise you, these will be the most comfortable, the most absorbent towels that you own. MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY, get the six-piece towel set for just $25. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time. Visit MyPhDWeightLoss.com. From 60 Minutes to Call Her Daddy to The View, and then Howard Stern, Kamala Harris has been on a friendly media tour this week, and it hasn't gone as well as she expected. We have the highlights for you. Spartanburg County Sheriff Chuck Wright spoke with Fox News contributor Sarah Carter and had a pretty clear message for Kamala Harris and the feds. North Carolina election officials are adjusting their voting rules to ensure residents in areas impacted by the recent hurricane damage can vote early in the upcoming election. Americans for Prosperity is a grassroots organization working on a variety of issues that affect our daily lives. Candace Carroll joins us today to talk about how you can get involved in this movement. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but, you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills. <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. Kamala Harris evidently realizing that she needs to get out and be heard. Although it's a dangerous move for someone like her who can't speak intelligently without a teleprompter. But obviously her advisors believe that it's time for Harris to do some friendly interviews to try to make it look as though she has, she is allowing media access to her. She started with 60 minutes and produced one of her best word salads of the campaign. When asked about whether Israeli prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu is listening to the Biden Harris administration and doing what they're suggesting. But it seems that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is not listening. Well, Bill, the work that we have done has resulted in a number of m- movements in that region by Israel that were very much prompted by or a result of uh, many things, including our advocacy for what needs to happen in the region. Anybody care to interpret that for me? What did she exactly tell Bill Whitaker (laughs) with 60 Minutes? Uh, They then moved on to her thoughts about immigration, where she was asked multiple times by Mr. Whitaker why she has not stopped the flow of illegals in the early days or why she didn't stop the flow of illegals in the early days of the Biden-Harris administration. Here's the exchange. I've been covering the border for, for years and so I know this is not a problem that started with your administration. Correct, correct. But there was an historic flood of undocumented immigrants coming across the border the first three years of your administration. As a matter of fact, arrivals quadrupled from the last year of President Trump. Was it a mistake to loosen the immigration policies as much as you did. It's a long-standing problem. And solutions are at hand. And from day one, literally, we have been offering solutions. What I was asking was, was it a mistake to kind of allow that flood to happen in the first place? I think the policies that we have been proposing are about fixing a problem, not promoting a problem. Okay, but, but the, the numbers did quadruple and under the numbers your, under today because of what we have done. We have cut the flow of illegal immigration by half. Should you we have, have done cut that? the should flow of fentanyl that? by half. But we need Congress to be able to act to actually fix the problem. We now know her why her campaign has not allowed her to do these types of interviews, because I'll have to say that Bill Whitaker did try to get an answer. He did push back a little. Now, maybe not as much as he could have, but he did ask her, what, about three times there, why did you let them in to begin with? Why didn't you stop them? Now, we also got some details, (laughs) although a little sketchy, about the gun that she says she owns. 
you recently surprised people when you said that you are a gun owner. And then if someone came into your that house... That's not the first time I've, I've, they I've would talked get shot. about it. That's not the first time I've talked about so it. So what kind of gun do you own and when and why did you get it? I have a Glock and um, I've had it for quite some time. And um, I mean, look, Bill, my background is in law enforcement. And um, so there you go. Have you uh, ever fired it? Yes. <laughs> of course I have. <laughs> At a shooting range. Yes, of course I have. Well, of course she has. The next thing we'll see is some video of her actually in the shooting range uh, with her Glock, if she really owns one. I would like to. I wish he had asked her, well, what kind of Glock do you have? Can, uh, Madam Vice President, can you tell me the model? I bet she can't. Uh, moving over to The View, the Vice President told us what we suspected, but now it's confirmed that she's no different than Joe Biden that a vote for Kamala Harris is a vote for the status quo. When asked what she would have done differently over the past three and a half years, well, Harris had a hard time coming up with anything, basically saying, well, I think I would have probably done everything just the same. If, if anything, would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of, of, of most of the decisions that have had impact. Wow. Nothing comes to mind. Although the past few weeks since becoming the nominee, she has tried to tee up some ideas of things that she thinks probably should be changed. What's her, what is her slogan? We're not going back. Wow. One of the major risks of sort uh, of a politician avoiding media appearances like she has been doing these past weeks is that they can get out of practice that even a simple question can trip them up combine that with a friendly media personality looking to help out their favorite candidate which is what we saw with some of these softball questions on the view yesterday and you have a recipe for what literally happened yesterday this was a love fest the women on the view are Harris supporters they, they don't try to hide that did you see them as she walked in? Well, no, you didn't because you didn't watch, did you? I, I watched so you didn't have to. They were all hugging her and, and just laughing like they were girlfriends, coming over for a weekend trip or something. From the beginning, ABC News moderator Whoopi Goldberg actually introduced Harris as the next president of the United States. Now, is that not a little bias for, a, for, for an interview? But did the ladies on The View actually end up mortally wounding their sister, Kamala? Did ABC News co-host Sonny Hostin may have accidentally damaged the vice president by creating a soundbite moment ripe for a Trump campaign ad when she asked her that question, is there something you, you would have done differently? And when she couldn't come up with anything, let, let's listen to that one more time. If, if anything... Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of, of, of most of the decisions that have had impact. This is a soundbite. I have a feeling we're going to hear again. Because when you're running on the platform of moving forward, of making changes, of trying to convince Americans that, yeah, life is tough right now, but you're going to do something different, but yet you admit that you would have done everything the same way? I think that's, that's damaging. Then she wrapped up things yesterday by sitting down with radio host Howard Stern, and boy, was this a waste of time. Stern put on the gloves and teed this interview up, telling her, well, I want this to go well for you saying that he hates it when people make fun of her, referencing a skit on Saturday Night Live that was mocking the vice president. When you say you don't nap, I get it, because like what you've taken on is extraordinarily difficult. And I, I mean, do you feel the pressure of the moment in the sense that, like I, when I met you out in the hall, I said, I'm really nervous because I want this to go well for you. I want it to go well for the country. Even when I watch them on Saturday Night Live with the, um, where they have Maya Rudolph playing yeah. you, mm -hmm. I hate it. I don't want you being made fun of. Mm -hmm. I, 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 there's too much at stake. I believe the entire future of this country right now, I mean, as America, land of the free, 
home of the brave, I think it's literally on the line. I agree with you. And, and when I see them, how did you react to this Saturday Night Live bit? Well, I just saw it, actually. And it was funny. I, I am a huge fan of Maya Rudolph. So I think she put a lot of time into the, to doing the, the, the piece and, and, and the character. Um, now, is that your typical political interview? I mean, what did we gain by that? What did we learn? Absolutely nothing. Uh, and the best part of the Stern interview, though, is Stern asked her if she will leave the country if Trump wins. <laughs> we, we can only hope on that one. Let me ask you this. If he wins, God forbid, would you feel safe in this country? Would you stay in this country? Howard, I'm doing everything I can to make sure he does not win. Well, what if he does? How can you be safe? He's saying, oh, I'm just going to do whatever the hell I want. This time I know what I need to do. You know what? All of those former officials from national security, uh, the over 200 Republicans who worked with both Presidents Bush, Mitt Romney, John McCain, who are endorsing me, the former vice president, Dick Cheney, who was voting for me along with his daughter, Liz, Liz Cheney. Cheney. We are building a coalition of people that are Republicans, independents, Democrats, libertarians, all stripes of Americans who are coming together to say, you know what, this election is about putting country before party, that this is about saying, do we want a president who's going to abide by the oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States or someone who is full-time engaged in flattery from Vladimir Putin of Russia and sending COVID testing kits over to him when Americans are dying every day? Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY. That's 864-477-5639. Email's always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. This year, I really thought I was going to have to boycott the holidays. I was going to lock myself away and not come out until 2025. But after finding PhD weight loss, you can bet I'll be at every holiday party I'm invited to. That's because PhD weight loss helped me take control with great confidence, support, and my new healthy body. The best part? PhD Weight Loss did it all without harmful drugs that keep you dependent on them to maintain your weight loss. It's a natural, medication-free approach to weight loss crafted to naturally diminish food-related thoughts, hunger, and cravings, making your weight loss journey more sustainable and enjoyable. Take it from me, I lost 33 pounds. The PhD Weight Loss Program teaches you not just what to eat and when, but also how to think differently about food and finally let go of those cravings and get rid of the hunger naturally. Don't lock yourself away this holiday season. Call PhD Weight Loss today at 864-644-1900. That's 864-644-1900 or go to myphdweightloss.com. Wow, some scary times as we watch Hurricane Milton. It strengthened into a Category 5 once again. It's kind of going back and forth between a 4 and a 5. Uh, last time I looked uh, early this morning, it was maintaining its strength out of five. The storm continues to pose just a huge danger to Florida where it potentially will uh, make a historic strike that will be more destructive with a life-threatening storm surge like Florida has not seen in a long time. Uh, widespread wind damage expected, uh, rainfall, uh, possible tornadoes uh, spinning off later today into tomorrow. The National Hurricane Center said in its uh, uh, evening discussion last night, Milton has the potential to be one of the most destructive hurricanes on record for West Central Florida. All preparations are were, were rushed as people were trying to get out of Florida. It didn't help that gasoline stations were running out of fuel. Of course, airlines shutting down, running out of, of flights. The hurricane uh, was centered at just over 400 miles southwest of Tampa. Again, packing 165 mile per hour winds. It's tracking east, northeast at about 10 miles per hour. Milton has grown in size over the past 24 hours, too. It's uh, presently about 140 miles wide from its center. The meteorologists are expecting it to continue to grow even larger as it approaches Florida which means its impact will be a much bigger area than even initially predicted. So as we watch Hurricane Milton ap approach Florida and, and expected to make landfall 
late tonight and into tomorrow morning. Those of us in the Carolinas still working on a recovery effort that's going to take months, if not years, from Hurricane Helene just uh, just over a week and a half ago. Uh, we have some updates for you. Uh, Duke Energy saying in a release last night that 90% of capable power in the Carolinas has been restored to customers. According to, to Duke, power has been restored to over a million customers in South Carolina, over 1.3 million customers in North Carolina, many more to go in Western North Carolina, though. And, and I know it's tough. If you're one of the ones listening today, maybe you're listening on uh, in your car or on your phone um, because you don't have electricity to plug your radio in at home. Hope you, hopefully you have a battery-powered radio, and, and if not, I'm sure you'll be getting one as part of your emergency kit. But I'm sure you're thinking, well, I'm not one of those million plus, and I'd love to get my power back. I get that. According to Duke, fewer than 105,000 customers in South Carolina remain without power. Many, they say, will be stored, restored uh, within the next couple of days. Duke Energy said that their focus over the past week has been on restoration of the backbone of its system, which uh, they compared it to the interstate highways and interchanges of the power grid. The backbone work has been completed, they said. Now they can start drilling down on some of the uh, individual lines. The company said their current plan is moving personnel to work on the power grid's thousands of miles of lines and poles that serve individual homes and businesses. Uh, this is going to be slower work, of course, but uh, expecting to to be able to restore that power soon. Some of the other co-ops, uh, very similar stories. Uh, Jim Donahue, a spokesperson for Lawrence Electric, for example, said that nothing could have prepared them for what happened, but that crews continue to work until power is back on, saying, we're not going to stop. The whole army of personnel is not going to stop until we get the last house lit. He talked about how crews from as far, as way, uh, far away as Minnesota have worked 16, 17-hour days to get power back on. 98% of customers within the Lawrence Electric service area lost power, according to Donahue. So, again, those of you who don't have electricity, I'm sure you're thinking, well, when when am I going to have it? Uh, by the way, Lawrence, Lawrence Electric, they say they expect everyone to have power in Lawrence County by October 11th. So, if you're without power in that area, maybe within just a couple of days. Posting on X, Sarah Carter, a Fox News contributor, interviews Spartanburg County Sheriff Chuck Wright, who is up in Rutherford County, North Carolina, helping one of his fellow sheriffs in that area. Uh, He had a message for Kamala Harris. But if you had a message for the White House and how they've handled the situation up here um, in North Carolina, what would your message be, Sheriff Wright? If you're going to do the things you've been talking about doing, we'd just assume you stay out of the way and let the good men and women around the mountain area in the foothills take care of our own because you're nothing more than a boat anchor. No help. FEMA hasn't been helpful. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, that, that lady that's running for president talks about the $750. <laughs> well, but all that money you give to Ukraine and all these other people that really want to kill us don't want to do anything to help us. Why don't you just give that money to them? I see you want to give it to well, begin with. And a lot of people have been turned down for the $750. Almost everybody I've spoken to hasn't received any of the funding, and they've been turned down for personal items. Well, they, they talked about get on your phone or your computer. Do you not see what the devastation is? They don't have a phone or a computer. There's nothing up here. There's no communication. I'm going to be posting this later. There's no way to access the Internet unless you have a Starlink net. And thank, everybody's... Thank you, Elon Musk. By the way. Oh, yes. So, Thank so you, Elon Musk. President Donald Trump, we need you. I'd say that uh, Sheriff Wright, that, that was a pretty direct message to both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, wasn't it? To Kamala Harris saying, hey, uh, we don't need your help if, if, if this is the, the way we're going to be treated. But to Donald Trump, hey, President Trump, we need you. We need you to come. Wow. <laughs> uh, one other quick uh, observation too, or, or an update. Many of you have asked about spectrum. You have text, you've emailed as we've given you updates. And by the way, 
let me remind you, go to 989WORD.com where we have a full page of resources for you, 989WORD.com. Uh, and, and we have phone numbers, emails, and other information for a, a, a lot of the resources out there. Uh, you may have questions, and they can uh, you can find the answers to that. Uh, many of you, though, have asked about Spectrum, and evidently Spectrum has been hard to get answers from for, for your Internet service. Scott Pr- Prizronsky, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, Prizronsky, Senior Director of Communications for Charter Communications, which is Spectrum, uh, responded to a request saying that 3,000 field leaders, technicians, and engineers are actively working around the clock to repair the damage, saying in Greenville Spartanburg areas, there are 188 miles of substantial physical damage. They're basically having to rebuild the network. He says they're working on it to have patience. We kind of knew that, didn't we? Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY. That's 864-477-5639. Emails always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. Whether you're replacing a broken appliance or maybe you're just upgrading, you're totally remodeling the kitchen. When it's time to get those new appliances, when you're ready for them, you don't want to have to wait weeks or even months to get started using them, right? Well, that's not the case when you shop with my friends at discounted appliance warehouse with over 11,000 square feet and 1500 appliances at any any given time you can buy today and use today quite often. I'm talking about shopping with my friends at discounted appliance warehouse in Pickens. It's worth the short drive over to Pickens, Jeff, Johnny, Kyle, the whole team over there. They'll take good care of you. They have an award-winning service department, expert installation, extended warranties, and a discounted appliance warehouse. They treat you like family. You're more than just a credit card swipe to all the team over there. Discounted Appliance Warehouse. They're proud to offer Speed Queen, the only washer and dryers with manufacturer's warranties that cover parts and labor. You owe it to yourself if you're looking for a new appliance to head over to Pickens to Discounted Appliance Warehouse online at dawpickens.com, dawpickens.com. The Carolinas are literally digging our way out of the devastation caused by Hurricane Helene, but life will get back to normal. Things will turn around, and in this important election year, we have a lot of choices that we have to make on November the 5th, important choices. Americans for Prosperity are continuing to work to make our life better. The decisions that we make on November the 5th will affect us for years to come. Joining me today, Candace Carroll, Director of Public Affairs. Welcome. How are you, Candace? I'm doing well, Joey. How are you? I am good. What a week, huh? Uh, Before we get into some of the issues, I mean, how's the team at uh, Americans for Prosperity South Carolina? How did y'all make out in in wake of uh, Hurricane Helene? Um, We are good comparatively to our neighbors in the north. We've got some colleagues in North Carolina who are stranded up in the Swannanoa area that we're working through. And our team here in South Carolina has helped with a lot of the recovery efforts. I know some of our teams been up in Campobello this week trying to help with efforts there and cutting down trees, delivering bottled water. And as you mentioned, Joey, it's just been such a mess to have to deal with. Definitely unprecedented for this general area. A lot of people still without power, without Internet. I know there's flooding damage going on. But what I've seen, Joey, that's been so heartening is that people aren't dependent on the government to come in and save them in this situation. Neighbors are helping neighbors. Um, churches are opening up, letting people come shower, providing free meals. Restaurants are providing free meals. You've got colleges and universities that are letting people come shower in the locker rooms. And so it's really been heartening to see that side of America kind of come together again, if you will, and not be so dependent on just waiting on someone to show up to help them out. But instead, you know, you'll see posts or I'll hear from friends who are like, hey, I've got power. Who needs to come do laundry or who needs a hot meal or a hot shower? And it's just been so refreshing to see everyone come together. And I hope that continues because this restoration piece, both in South Carolina and North Carolina, is something that's going to take months, if not years, to get through. Um, and I hope that that neighborly um Neighborliness continues, um, Joey. I truly do. Yeah, it, it is nice to see that we can come together and help one another uh, in a time like this, for sure. Uh, l- let's start, Candice, with uh, a couple of the issues I know that Americans for Prosperity is working hard on, because, as I mentioned, yes, what we're going through right now in the Carolinas particularly, it's tough, but we ha- have to keep our eye on the ball from the standpoint that November the 5th, we're going to be making some really Uh, important decisions uh, that will affect our lives for many years to come. Let's start with taxes. Uh, This is an issue 
that even Democrats and Republicans seem to agree on. Let me give you an example here. Uh, 65% of Democrats agree this is a bad time to increase taxes. 89% of Republicans agree this is a bad time to increase taxes. Uh, this is an issue you guys are working on at Americans for Prosperity. Uh, you know, that's some something. Why do you think that someone like Kamala Harris and the Democrats, they continue to talk about raising taxes? Well, I just think they're so out of touch with what's going on in the lives of everyday Americans, frankly, Joey. And, you know, inflation is a real thing, especially for those who live outside of the Beltway and do their own grocery shopping. You can see the prices continuing to rise. And especially now with the recovery going on from Helene, we're going to continue to see supply chain disruptions there, which means that cost is going to get passed on to consumers. I know in my area there have been gasoline shortages. Um, for people. And so you're seeing prices already start to rise there. What I think is interesting, though, is we have the 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act from President Trump set to expire at the end of 2025. And as you mentioned, this would be an increase on taxes for everyone. Now, Democrats are saying, oh, it's just going to increase taxes on the wealthy. But that's not true at all. It's going to be roughly a $1,200 on middle-class South Carolinians. And so this is something that Republicans and Democrats, as you mentioned, are coming together on and saying, look, prices are skyrocketing. We can barely keep food on the table. Wages aren't keeping up with the inflation from the Biden administration. And now you want to raise taxes on top of that? This is just crazy. Um, The administration, again, is so out of touch. And it's something that we at Americans for Prosperity are really leaning into. I was actually in D.C. last week, Joey, talking to every single member of our congressional delegation about how this is not the time to raise taxes on South Carolinians or any other Americans for that matter. Yep. And, and you know, the other thing, and this is a theme that we keep hearing from Joe Biden and from Kamala Harris is, well, you know, corporate America is not paying their fair share. But even that is not resonating with, with the Americans. Um, 78% of Americans realize That if you raise corporate taxes, guess who's going to pay that in the end? It's going to cost us. It's going to cost all of us who are buying those products. Uh, They're just going to pass the cost on to the consumer, right? Absolutely. And what I think, too, that the real story that Kamala Harris is not mentioning is that our corporations already pay a 21% tax. So she wants to raise it to 28 percent. Corporations don't pay anything in taxes currently, and we want to go from zero to 21. We're saying or zero to 28. She's saying she wants to go from 21 to 28. And as you mentioned, that price is going to get passed on to consumers. And again, we have massive inflation already going on. And it's not because these companies are greedy that they're raising prices. Of course, they have to make a profit. But at the same time, they are limited on the goods that they are able to supply to people because of the inflationary policies that the Biden Harris administration has put into place. And so we have to be really cognizant of the fact that this corporate tax isn't just like massive corporations, think like Walmart. Um, we're talking about like mom and pop small businesses that would have to pay this tax as well. And that means that they're going to go out of business. If this corporate tax increase goes into effect that Kamala Harris wants, we could risk losing over 10,000 jobs in South Carolina because companies would have to close their doors because they could not afford to pay that 28% sales tax. Wow, wow. Uh, with me today, Candace Carroll, Director of Public Affairs, Americans for Prosperity, South Carolina. For additional information on what this great group does, uh, go to americansforprosperity.org uh, to see just, just all the details, all the information they have about the issues that they're working every day. Uh, for you and me. You know, this week we watched uh, Senator J.D. Vance and Governor Tim Walz in the vice presidential debate. Health care spending and, and the cost of health care was one of the issues that, that came up. Uh, talk with us a bit about uh, just the, the, the wasteful spending that we're seeing and that we could we could save some big bucks if we would just do the right thing, couldn't we? We could, absolutely. And the Affordable Care Act, of course, when it passed, it was already um, – Uh, There was a lot of fraud involved in that, Joey, from the very beginning. But we even saw during COVID where there were expansions that took place within the ACA or Obamacare, as most people know it, that continue to be riddled with fraud, that continue to ask for patients and not give them a personal option when it comes to their health care. So what we are advocating for is 
We want transparency when it comes to health care. We want people to be able to restore that doctor-physician relationship, have access to telehealth, have access to medicines that they can afford, and not through a Medicaid-type system, but something that is more of a health savings account to really empower the patient to be able to decide what is the best use of those health care dollars that they have. Um, we've seen this at a federal level. We've seen this at a state level. Joey, you and your listeners were great in working with us on repealing Certificate of Need here in South Carolina. But there's very similar issues that happen federally when it comes to yeah. health care that we are really leaning into that cause the price to go up for patients. And that's something we are paying a lot of attention to and where we don't want the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act to expire from 2017. We do want a lot of these Obamacare expansions to expire next year um, because they are just not helpful for patients all across the country. Yep. Candace Carroll, Director of Public Affairs, Americans for Prosperity, South Carolina. Thank you for what you guys do. And and you know what I love about uh, Americans for for Prosperity is, yes, it's a national organization. Organization, but you have your state chapters as well, and you you have you have just a, a grassroots effort uh, here in South Carolina. You have people who volunteer to to knock on doors and to talk with people about the issues. Uh, take just a minute to tell us about volunteer opportunities, and I'm I'm assuming that you probably need some donors as well. We do. So we are currently engaging across the state on about 20 different races heading into the general election from the upstate to the low country. So there's ample opportunity for you to get get involved in these state legislative races and and changing what our general assembly looks like down in Columbia, the ones who make the laws that, you know, really impact your day to day as a South Carolinian. We're also engaging in a number of policy fights. So school choice is a top issue for us. We want to lower taxes here in South Carolina as well, um, in addition to what we're looking to do at the federal level. So check us out at americansforprosperity.org. You can also follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Americans for Prosperity South Carolina. We would love to get you plugged in um, with us, whether it's one of those efforts or even now. As I mentioned at the top, Joey, we are cutting down trees and delivering yeah. um, supplies to people through this hurricane relief. So, you know, come get involved with us on that effort as well. Yep. Candace Carroll, always a pleasure. Again, thanks for what you guys are doing in South Carolina with Americans for Prosperity. Again, that is americansforprosperity.org. We'll talk again soon. Sounds great, Joey. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, Joey, at joeyhudson.com. Speaking of the Furman Ford text line, you know, it's never been more important to support locally run businesses owned by people who actually live here in the upstate. Let me take a minute to talk with you about our friends at Furman Ford. If you're looking for a new vehicle, maybe a great pre-owned vehicle, one you can you can trust, or maybe you're looking to order that special vehicle. Uh, either way. If you want a new one, a brand new one, or a pre-owned that you can trust, the, the folks at Furman Ford, they're there to help you. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line because every single tra- transaction is important to them. Jim Furman, Matthew Furman, they do business the right way. When you uh, stop by, when you give them a call, or maybe when you just uh, send them a quick email, you're always going to have access to a member of the Furman Ford family. And by the way, they also offer great service, and you're not going to have to wait weeks and weeks to get it done. And you do not have had to purchase your vehicle at Furman Ford. It doesn't even have to be a Ford. They, they service all makes and models. Visit my friends at Furman Ford online at FurmanFord.com, FurmanFord.com. On our text line, boy, uh, you guys have been busy <laughs> texting. I, hey, I love them. I love the text messages. I love your emails, too, Joey at JoeyHudson.com. A uh, texter, Angie from Rutherford County, up there where uh, Sheriff Wright was, um, says she says that people are, in fact, getting $750. She says, I'm one of them, and many of my friends have. We were all denied for the first part of the home damage relief package instantly because we all have homeowners and our homes weren't destroyed. What damage we do have is minimal, and we don't qualify for that part of FEMA. However, she said, if you have homeowners, FEMA waits to see what your homeowners will cover uh, and, and will do. 
And I guess it's all in how you fill that out and, and which blocks you check. I actually went on the app yesterday and checked it out, and it does ask you a lot of questions. And if you choose ho- that you do have homeowners, I think you're going to be automatically denied because they they view your homeowners as the first response. Appreciate your uh, appreciate your text there, Angie. Susan from Hartwell says. FEMA head Deanne Criswell is falsely accusing Trump of putting po- politics ahead of people. Bravo Sierra. FEMA is putting politics ahead of people by slow walking assistance to Western North Carolina, where support for Trump is strong. Sunday night, my best friend from Spruce Fine texted me that they wouldn't be getting their power back on for another six weeks. The election is in four weeks. Exclamation point. Scott in Tacoa said, did I hear that right? She offered $200 million in loans. Is Lebanon, Ukraine getting loans? Are they going to have to pay back all the billions? Uh, Scott, I think you know the answer to that. No, it is not loans to Ukraine. Texter, three people that I work with got approved for the FEMA money. None of them lost power or anything, and all of them are minorities to other people that I work with who had damage to their homes. No power for a week, and they got nothing. They got denied. I'm sure there's going to be some stories. We're going to, we're going to hear some stories like this on this whole FEMA package, the 750 bucks that Kamala Harris announced uh, last weekend. Roger says, Joey, they need to send the cable people to Greenville. We have no TV, Wi-Fi, internet. There's not even work. They're not even working on it. Please help. Uh, Roger, I, I hope you're listening a minute ago when I read to you the only thing I have from Spectrum, uh, and that was just a, a news release that they put out their spokesperson put out saying we're working on it. I uh, wish I could tell you more, Roger. Texture says, I was denied the FEMA 750 at first. I eventually found a way to respond back. Online doesn't give many options of corresponding to them. I found a survey of my experience and voiced my opinion there. About three days later, I was approved, and yesterday it hit my bank account. I'd love to know what that uh, survey is. Where did you find that survey? Uh, email me the information so I can... Uh, pass it out to everybody else. Joey at joeyhudson.com. Texture says they're approving people who, uh, who nothing happened to, but us who lost our food and went a week without power, we're getting denied immediately. Another texter, Shannon from Shelby says they allocate money for Lebanon without congressional approval, but refuse to allocate money without congressional approval for the, for North Carolina. They could care less about Americans. They have a lust for power and love of money. You're so right on that for sure, Shannon. Appreciate you listening in Shelby. Texture, uh, hey, Joey, uh, Will, Will Stanford, owner of Stanford Electric Company. In regards to electric permits for meters reattachment and repair, a, permo- uh, a permit is not required as long as the load side, house side, cables do not get replaced. I've done several meter reattachments for Blue Ridge and Duke, and no permit was required. I appreciate you. Appreciate you listening, Will, and thanks for that update. Texture, Joey, thank you for always saying God's got this. He's still in control. Yeah, that's how I end the program every day because God does watch over us. God is in control. I truly believe that. And sometimes it's hard for for our little pea brains to understand that because we think, gosh, look at the devastation. Why would God allow this? Um, but God will protect us. God will take care of us as, as bad as things are look sometimes god's always there for us uh texture the biggest lesson learned from hurricane helene is that americans have absolutely no need of and get no benefit from the federal government shut it down entirely and only reopen the few departments we actually miss after six months now that'd be a nice experiment wouldn't it just shut it down see what we what we miss and then reopen those good idea Texter, if the reports that keep coming out of Western North Carolina are true about government getting in the way of relief supplies, are true people going to become lawless and start shooting? That footage of a FEMA helicopter intimidating the private citizens helping their neighbors is the kind of thing that starts a armed uprising. I'm really surprised no one in that crowd didn't shoot at the helicopter. Let's, we can't resort to that, but you're right. You know, things... Uh, people and and the redneck air force is an example of that i think some of these people are just taking things into into their own hands and saying we got to get this done we can't wait on the the federal government to back us up let's just do it let's help our neighbors and that's what they're doing 
Your texts are always welcome. Comments as well uh, via email, joey at joeyhudson.com. Uh, by the way, for those of you in North Carolina, and I, I've been getting this question a lot too, well, what about the elections? How is this going to affect the elections? Well, uh, the North Carolina election officials say that they're going to adjust the voting rules to ensure residents in areas impacted by this uh, hurricane can vote early in the November 5th election. On Monday, the North Carolina Elections Board had, had a, a, an emergency meeting and passed a bipartisan resolution that reformed the state's early voting process in 13 counties. Notably, all except one, Buncombe, voted for former President Donald Trump in 2020. Joe Biden won, uh, won Buncombe. That, that's the more liberal area in western North Carolina. The adjustments, according to the Elections Commission, include changing or adding voting sites and maintaining their availability, extending the hours when a voting site is open, and adding or reducing days that any site is open within the early voting period, according to the election board. Also, uh, voters in these counties will have more time to request an absentee ballot, with the deadline being November the 4th. Uh, the state's election board identified 13 counties in western North Carolina as the most impacted. These counties are uh, Ash, Avery, Buncombe, Haywood, Henderson, Madison, McDowell, Mitchell, Polk, Rutherford, Transylvania, Watauga, and Yancey. So if you live in those counties and you're concerned about this, uh, just, just check in with your county voter registration office. Voters in these counties will now have the option of turning in absentee ballots to another county's election board, for example rather than following the, the previous protocol that mandated they only submit their ballots to their local counties. So they're trying to make it possible, which they should. They're doing the right thing here by, by loosening up the way things should be done in order for you to vote. Now, we got to watch it because if it gets too loose, people will try to cheat. And the wrong people will try to cheat. So we, we got to watch that for sure. But I've, I have confidence that the GOP... Uh, and, and Laura Trump, will, since, this, since North Carolina is her state, she'll make sure that they get the resources they need to make sure that the elections are fair. Uh, you know, Trump narrowly won North, North Carolina in 2020. It's like 1.4 percentage point, And he can win it again. He needs to win it again this year. So that we got to make sure that, yeah, life is hard. And I understand if you've lost your home, maybe lost your business, maybe elections aren't the most important thing to you right now, but they should be because the only way you're going to get your area rebuilt is to have Donald Trump in, in leadership. And I promise you, come January, when, when he's sworn in, he'll make sure that you get the resources you need. Now, I know you want them well before then, but we can't leave it up to, to Kamala Harris because we know what she'll do with it. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list yet, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Just click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails and the most up-to-date news. Also, find me on YouTube. Be sure and like, subscribe, uh, follow me on my YouTube channel. Just search for Joey Hudson. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. Be sure and forward this edition of just the truth to some friends just click on the share button send it to a few of your contacts because if we're going to build our community and if we're going to win in november we got to build an army of conservatives the way we beat joe biden is through educating people and no better way than encouraging them to listen to just the truth hey keep those comments coming via the firm and ford text line 864-477-JOEY 864-477-5639 your emails always welcome as well joey at joeyhudson.com don't forget to take advantage of the my pillow special 25 dollars for the my towels six piece towel set when you use promo code joey just go to mypillow.com always use promo code joey we're back again tomorrow hope you will be too remember god's got this he's still in control